question, is this Tesla cell better than this LG cell? I say we take a look. All right, so when you read online, people like to say that Tesla cells do not have PTC or CID mechanisms inside of their cells. And of course, me being who I am, I want proof of that, right? I'm not gonna believe anything that people say until I can see it with my own eyes. So let's take apart this guy. Here we have a Tesla battery cell from 2009 from the smart modules, right? Let's take it apart. Let's talk about precautions. This cell can hold a lot of energy, about 12 watt hours. And so in order for you to not create sparks or heat or possibly a fire, what I've done is I've shorted out this cell to make sure that there's no energy left in there. I did that by soldering a resistor from the positive to the negative and leaving it there for a few days. So this has very, very little voltage now. I believe this is venting. All right. All right, now that we've taken these apart, this is the Tesla cell and this is the LG cell. And you can see some differences here. Uh, what I did was went ahead and cut this center portion here of this Tesla cell, right? And once you remove that, then you see that there's only a layer on the bottom and it has this kind of pre-scored little circle and that serves as a vent if the pressure inside the cell goes above a certain amount it will actually push that pre-score line it'll break that metal and it'll go it'll push it right through then what that has that has access to the other side and it will vent through these three ports here so it has a vent but what it does not seem to have is the PTC layer, which should be between this and this layer and that layer. Um, and it doesn't have the CID, which I've seen in many places referred to as the current interrupt device. I don't know if that's what those letters stand for, but it is essentially a layer, right? It's a layer of uh, material that will with pressure will bent up and it will actually physically disconnect the bottom layer from the top layer. And that does not seem to be present in the Tesla cells. Here's a, an LG 18650. And what you will see is that this bottom layer here where the, where the positive terminal of the cell gets connected to, it's actually floating, it's not touching the top one because it's floating and it's only touching the top portion of that through this center thing right here. Uh, it also has uh, much more room allowing for the PTC layer to be in there. Let's look at a CT scan of uh, just a typical, you know, 18650s or like this one so we can explain more uh, how those mechanisms look all right so here i have pulled up two cross sections of a typical 18650 cell one of them is a ct scan image a ct image scan right uh that can be found on researchgate.net and then i just pulled up another image right here which is an actual physical cross section of a cell that means that a cell was cut in, in half or slice and then you can see the picture so Check this out here. In this cross section, you can see that the terminal, the cell's terminal, it's going to the layer on the on the bottom, the, the bottom most layer, right? That is where the battery is connected. And then the next layer up on top is where it's labeled as CID. And it's only the center portion, which is like a little bump there, it's actually touching there. And so the first, uh, the first layer has holes through it, which will let the pressure, if the cell develops pressure for any reason, uh, usually the most common reason why a cell would develop pressure would be because of temperature, right? So if the temperature in the cell goes up, then what's going to happen is going to push that second layer, not the first. The first one will have holes 
uh, let the pressure right through and it will push the second layer up uh, which will disconnect the first layer from the second layer and so that will interrupt the current it's essentially a physical it's like a breaker it's like a circuit breaker so then on top of that is this black layer here and that is what's called ptc or positive uh, thermal coefficient right and essentially what that is is some material that the hotter it gets the less the higher the resistance of that material becomes and essentially uh, what it does is that the hotter your cell or that material gets, then the less power that it will let through. So your cell will have the less resistance when it's cold, and as the temperature rises, then the resistance will increase. Uh, and then that is on the other side, it's connected to the topmost layer, which is that layer that we usually solder to and so that's the problem with soldering people say that soldering is not good for the cells and that is true because then what happens is that all that heat gets transferred to that ptc which is okay because that ptc material can handle heat but what cannot handle heat is the other white material that you see on the edges that material right there is essentially is the isolator for all those, uh, the positive terminal material there to the outer shell casing of the cell, which is negatively charged, right? Which is a negative terminal. And so if you heat that layer too much, what happens is that you can melt that. And so if this layer touches this other layer or this, any of those layers in here in the middle touch any of these layers that are being separated by that thin isolating plastic then you will have problems you will have a cell that it will be shorted so it's pretty cool to see this uh x-ray of the 18650 uh if you really like batteries like me you should read this page right researchgate.net it really uh explains a bunch of like experiments that they've done with these cells like uh there's this one right here is like a shake They've taken cells and shaken them for, you know, in the, all three axes for uh, extended periods of time. And then they come and they take these uh, CT scans of the cells and they try to figure out if there was any damage. Um, this is pretty fascinating stuff when it comes to uh, batteries. It's pretty geeky. It's not for everyone. But if you're into this stuff and you like to know everything about batteries, uh, I recommend uh, this reading here. I will put a link to this website on the description of this video. All right, so I hope this explains. Uh, oh, guys, what do you know? The internet is correct. The uh, Tesla cells do not have any of these internal uh, safety uh, devices that all of the other 18650s do have. And so when we're building our uh, DIY power bolts, that means that we're actually doing it in a safer way than Tesla's doing. It's essentially our, our Tesla style fuses, they are pretty much just another redundancy that we are making. And of course we need all the redundancy, right? Because we're using cells that are not premium, cells that are, you know, towards the end of their life. Uh, and so you can use all the safety that you can get, right? So for all those people there that says that, that say that we're doing stuff in an unsafe way, by design, this stuff is safer than what Tesla has on their, on their power walls and on their, uh, you know, on their cars because they're, we're, we're, we're adding cells that have all the safety features inside of them. Tesla's not. Tesla's doing them on the outside, right? And so, yeah, use your, your good judgment, uh, you know, do your, uh, do your research, do your testing so you don't put bad cells into your power walls and move forward. We're gonna prove people wrong and we're gonna prove to the world that, that laptop batteries have cells that have much, much life in them still and that we are doing something good by keeping them out of the recycler centers before their due time. We're, we're learning stuff and we're saving money and we're saving the environment by doing it. So keep going, keep building those DIY power walls. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you like what I do, uh, make sure you check out my Patreon thing here. As you know, I don't make a lot of money doing these videos, but I try my best. And so if you'd like to help me, you can do so by signing up and becoming one of my patrons. 
All right. Otherwise, like this video, uh, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. So that's what makes an 18650. Two separators, a piece of copper, and a piece of aluminum that is wrapped up in this black stuff. Simple as that.